coming back to our example, so back to the example. So this was our first order low pass. Just write this down here, so h of z. And this was here omega c t plus omega c t z to minus 1 and then divided divided here by t omega c plus 2 and then plus z to minus 1 t omega c half uh, omega c minus 2 just to use this formula which is a bit shorter than the final solution here just by having this here not one um, but the point is here so here we've got this omega c here and, um, and so this omega c here to get our digital frequency we're just replacing this here setting omega c with the formula here 2 divided by t and then tangents omega c divided by 2. So then therefore our this is then our desired digital digital cutoff frequency. And so we see the t cancels here out. So therefore we can set the t in the final design step just to 1 because it cancels out anyway. And so therefore it doesn't matter what we always said T, this is gone anyway. So then with this the design steps are clear so we need to first pre-warp how this is here called, this operation here. So that's here called, so-called pre-warp. And then we're putting this omega into this formula here and then with this we're getting our purely digital filter with our normalized cutoff frequency. So this operation is called pre-warp that we just um, documenting this here on this extra sheet. So omega c so is 2 divided by t tangents of omega c divided by 2. So that's our desired frequency. And this is the analog frequency. So if you now go back to our example, so the low pass filter, then we can also do our pre-warping here. So let's say we would like to have cutoff frequency of 0.1 in our low pass filter here. So this means the omega c is 2 pi f or 2 pi multiplied by 0.1 and um, as we know so the t doesn't matter so we're setting t just to 1 here and then and then we've got just a 2 here and um, let's just do this now in MATLAB here or octave and so what we need to do is need to define our frequency 0.1 and then our omega c is 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by f so like that and so then our capital omega c then results out of this as 2 divided by 
by t, so that's one, and then just the tangents of omega c, and then this divided by two. This was a mistake here, so divided by two. So now we've got our analog analog frequency omega c here out. Yeah, so if we go, if we move this a bit sideways here, so now we've got our analog frequency generated here. And so now with that, we can just um, put this into our calculated coefficients we have done before. So I just copy and paste them back in here. So these were the feedback coefficients here. Oops. And, and this obviously doesn't work because we no longer have a t. Because I set this to 1, so we need to correct this here. So that's our normalized coefficients here. And then the FIR coefficients were these here. And I also just need to get rid of the of the t here in this one. So also here. And so this t here, the bracket can go away and then this t here as well. And so with that we should get our feedback coefficients out there and, um, and then with this we can now create our frequency response, calculate our frequency response out of these coefficients here. And we need to again create our frequency axis here. Let's call this here xf. And then we just plot it. So plot of xf comma ups of h. So that's now our pre-warped frequency response. As we know, this is um, first order loop pass. So we don't expect an amazing jump here to zero at the at our cutoff frequency of 0.1. But it's just a quite a smooth, smooth fall off here. But um, with this I've demonstrated how this is pre-warped and then obviously it filters with higher order. This um, then looks much sharper. And so, so this, this gives us now a complete design strategy for the bilinear transform.